Right, next on our agenda today is Martina Bacheva. I hope I say it correctly. Uh, Martina works for the Joint uh, Technical Secretariat, the JTS, in Lille, uh, which is part of the Interreg 4 um, offices there. Uh, she's going to be talking about interregional cooperation, the state of play, and perspectives on it. Uh, she's also the officer at the JTS responsible for liaison with the DLAM project, about which you're going to hear more. So, Martina, the uh, floor is yours. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you very much, first of all, for inviting me to this final conference of DLAN. Um, as I have been already introduced, there is not much more to say. I have been uh, cooperating with DLAN throughout the last three years. And for me, it's always a, a big pleasure to assist at the final conference to see the final results of the project, to see uh, the, the, the outputs of, uh, of a successful cooperation. Um, so um, I would like maybe as a, oh, sorry. Device. <laughs> uh, to have around 15 minutes of your time just to draw the, the big framework of this project, to uh, especially also to show you why, from our perspective, this type of project and this topic is, is interesting and important. Uh, to finance, um, maybe as a transition to, to the previous speakers who, who, of course, were thematic experts, which I'm not, unfortunately, on ICT or, uh, yeah, uh, to make a transition in also to my speech is always the keywords to share and to collaborate, which we are encouraging in our program. However, not for private businesses, but uh, rather for public entities. and. Um, in the second part of the presentation, I will say some words on the DLAN project uh, from our perspective, and finally an outline on how interregional cooperation will go on uh, beyond uh, 2013. So interreg 4 c what is it? It's a European program and it's part of the EU cohesion and regional policy which is aiming uh, to um, harmonize the development on the EU territory and to reduce disparities between uh, European regions. The EU cohesion and regional policy has three objectives. It has been mentioned earlier, objective one, convergence, objective two, regional competitiveness and employment, and finally, objective three called European territorial cooperation. You can see also the respective budget here. Interreg 4C is part of Objective 3, is the, the, the least budget on this slide. However, we believe that uh, strong tangible results uh, will, uh, will uh, show the importance of interregional cooperation and maybe uh, lead to an increased budget <laughs> after 2014. Now zooming in into this Objective 3, European Territorial Cooperation. Some of you um, might have already you know, heard about Interreg, and uh, sometimes uh, people talking about Interreg A, B, or C, which can be quite confusing. So indeed, there are three different strengths of Interreg. And uh, they have all different um, territorial focus and uh, different, if they all finance different type of cooperation. There are many Interreg A programs which are financing cross-border cooperation. Uh, there are few Interreg B programs which are financing transnational cooperation and there is only one Interreg 4C program which is the, the one that uh, uh, co-financed the DLAN which is financing interregional cooperation. Also in terms of the type of activities that we are financing there is a difference between these two three strands. Interreg 4C program is financing soft cooperation in terms of exchanging of good practices, maybe piloting a transfer of good practices, little pilot project, where else, for example, Interreg 4B programs are more uh, infrastructure financing. This you can see also in terms of budget because uh, um, our program is relatively small. However, we have a unique feature that we um, connect the whole Europe, the whole Europe 27, 
meaning that we have all European regions on board, plus two associated countries, Switzerland and Norway, and we very much encourage the re European regions to cooperate on a wide geographical basis. So what is Interact for C? Just with a slogan, it's learning by sharing. We, are, we believe that European regions um, often face the same challenges. We believe that it's not necessary to reinvent the wheel, but that you can learn by looking and, at how other regions are dealing with, uh, with the same problems that you are facing. And we believe that through this exchange of experience, you can improve your own regional and local policies. We are focusing on two fields, uh, thematic fields. One is innovation and knowledge economy, and the other one is environment and risk prevention. Our program, where are we now today? We have had four calls of proposals. This picture shows um, the uh, applications that we have received for one of them. We are a very popular program, as modest as I am, I can say this, but uh, we have received altogether around 1,350 applications, which were involving 40,000 public entities in Europe and beyond. Now, an overview of approved projects. We have 204 projects running. We have now committed our full budget, so no more calls for proposals for this programming period. And uh, you can see here the sub-themes that we are financing in these two thematic priorities. The little uh, flash there shows uh, the uh, sub-theme where um, Dylan is, uh, is working in, which is uh, the information society. There are 17% of the projects um, working uh, in this sub-theme. Um, and the interesting part of this graph is also that it shows uh, the interest and the hot topics, let's say, in the region, because our program is a bottom-up program, so we have all these sub-themes open, but then it's really up to the regions to propose the topics and to show their interests. So as you can see, then, in innovation and knowledge economy, the big majority of, of projects are running under entrepreneurship and SMEs, which still seems to be a very, very important uh, topic at regional level, and uh, environment and risk prevention, it's energy and sustainable transport, which is the most uh, popular. Now we have a new initiative, I will mention this very shortly, it's uh, the program capitalization, which um, aims actually, you can imagine, with 204 projects running, uh, some of them are working, it's obvious that they are working on similar issues. So we decided at program level to cluster these projects and to get uh, the knowledge extracted. And uh, we have hired a bunch of experts to deal with this exercise and to identify at regional level the synergies, the complementarities, common approaches to these topics, maybe to identify very innovative approaches that we are not, uh, not aware, of, aware of. And finally, for our purpose, to have a tool to draw policy recommendations for regional, national and uh, EU level uh, in order to shape, uh, shape the regional policy for the future. So these are the capitalization topics uh, and um, now, a slide on the results that we have achieved at program level to give you an idea also because it's important and Dylan is part of these figures. So, um, the, we have three objectives which you can see on the left, left hand side of the slide, which is first to have a EU wide exchange of experience and a capacity building in the regions. The second objective is to identify, share and transfer good practices between European regions. And finally, the, the most important of our objectives is to improve regional and local policies. We are covering 90% of EU NATS2 regions, so I think the wide, uh, wide exchange of experience, uh, the, this objective can be regarded as fulfilled. And uh, we have also uh, certain indicators to, that we collect in order to be able to judge the, the increased capacity that has been achieved through Interact 4C projects, which you can see here, it's, uh, it's what we call stuff with increased capacity. So all around Europe, 3,500 uh, 3, um, 3, uh, people have 
an increased capacity after having finalized or having participated in an interact 4 c project. And there are 88 spin-off activities. This is quite an interesting result. It's kind of uh, unpredictable result at the beginning of the project where uh, a project manages at the end to create, for example, further corporations that um, further um, uh, proposals in other programs or to mainstream good practices or yeah, to, to kind of liaise with, with uh, partners that they have met throughout the project and create further um, activities together. The objective of good practices, so we have quite an impressive number of uh, qu quantity of good practices, uh, around 2,800, out of which 151 have been successfully transferred. And um, this uh, transfer of good practice is something very hard to achieve. I will give you an example so that you understand this is the actual impact on the territory that a project can achieve. Similarly, for the policies, uh, you see there that uh, 1,250 European policies have been addressed through Interreg 4C projects, and 118 have been uh, successfully uh, improved through our projects. To give you an example of, uh, of uh, a transfer of good practice, which is the project iSpeed, which have transferred a practice from Norway to the UK. And uh, the practice is about an application for smartphones, uh, which is, uh, have, uh, has an innovative functionality for trade discount offered to visitors. Um, yeah, exactly. And the same project, a policy improvement, um, under, running under the same top team than Dylan, which uh, managed to change a strategic document in the region and to integrate the analysis of this ice, uh, of a SWOT analysis that has been covered, uh, carried out uh, in the ISPIT project into their uh, rural development plan. So um, this is a something very rare even to achieve. Of course, we are all aiming at this, but uh, within a three years project lifetime, it's quite hard to have this result really endorsed and the policy document changed and improved uh, throughout these three years of cooperation. Now a few words on the DILAN project. Uh, what are, from our point of view, the project strengths? Um, yeah, before I start this slide, just to say that this is always a very nice occasion for me uh, to, to be here and to meet sometimes even partners and people that I've been working with uh, for several years, but I, I don't have the chance to meet them in person, so it's, uh, it's a very nice, uh, nice moment in, uh, in part of my job. And um, now, what um, are the features of DILAN that we, uh, we particularly are think that it's, uh, it's project strength? It's also partly the features that we have identified already at the beginning, why we have approved this project, and that have proven throughout the implementation to be, to, uh, be there. First of all, the topic tackled, of course, ICT. Digital ecosystems is very uh, much of European added value, so there is a, a potential um, to disseminate the results and uh, and also to help other regions in Europe with the knowledge that has been produced in DILAN. Second, of course, it's a strong focus on exchange of experience at policy level, having uh, the Welsh government also as a lead partner, but also, of course, all other partners in the project. Uh, there are pilot actions going on in the project, which is an interesting component, and uh, we will see, I think, later on in the next presentation some outcomes. And, uh, um, of course, the management, which uh, we have very much appreciated that there was a very professional and committed lead partner uh, with whom we had a very good and close cooperation. So, um, I think especially in, in view of some unforeseen circumstances that always come up during the implementation of a project we have managed quite well and uh, I think that the mon months to come will also be, uh, we will manage to finalize everything uh, in order together. 
Now, a few words on the future of interregional cooperation. Uh, this is actually uh, the first slide is the indicative timeline it should be, in my view, presented maybe a bit later, but so that you can see now what is going on at European level. So there is the EU 2020 strategy, which has been presented in March 2010, uh, out of which there is a draft regulation that has been shaped, uh, and uh, um, I'm going to come to this in the next slides. Uh, in June 2012, uh, the programming committee of Interact 4C has been set up, which is now already working and preparing the concrete um, picture of how the future program will look like. We hope that somewhere between the end of 2013, we are going to find out more from the European institutions on the final budget uh, that is going to be dedicated to interregional cooperation. And um, as you can see, that's what, what we are all hoping for, is to submit the, uh, the proposal for the future program in 2000, end of 2013, in order to have it approved in the first half of 2013, and hopefully to have the first call for proposals in the second half of 2014. So coming now back to the CU 2020 strategy, uh, which is the big framework, strategic tra framework of the Commission for the future programming period. It has three pillars, smart growth, green growth and inclusive growth. And these three pillars have been uh, translated into 11 thematic objectives in the draft regulation. Um, and so now the draft regulation is on the table and uh, is going to be examined by the Council, by the um, uh, and there are certain, I would say, directions that the regulation is outlining for the interregional cooperation post-2014. First would be to link it stronger to the cohesion policy, to the objective one, current objective one. Uh, also to concentrate on the transfer of good practices into the mainstream programs. The second would be that the program in the future will focus on capacity building, on building institutional capacities and efficient public administration, which we are not doing at all for the moment. We don't have this type of project. And finally, you can see that there is a, there is a, a bullet point thematic concentration question mark to give you um, maybe a, an idea is that there are different pros and cons on either have a stronger focus and really pick up only a few topics that uh, we will concentrate on in the future. The regulation leaves this very open because uh, for interregional cooperation we can cover all 11 thematic objectives according to the regulation. There is another point um, here to mention is the, maybe some of you are uh, familiar with the regions uh, for knowledge. Um, program which is running uh, currently around being managed by the Commission itself and which in the future should be included uh, very probably under Interreg for 5C. Uh, so it will uh, be also part uh, probably of our job for the future. Uh, so what is the programming committee discussing now in terms of, uh, of the shape of the program is that we have two scenarios which are more or less on the table but which are not mutually exclusive, so probably it will be a mixture of the two. One would be that we keep the program as it is by, however, introducing certain improvements and simplifications, meaning that we are going to have probably, or this is just a, 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 in discussion, only one type of project. Uh, and um, the other th uh, possibility is that we are going to more take the role of a supportive program to national and regional operational programs, um, which would be a more fundamental change because you, you, can, you might know that some national and regional operational programs also have um, some measures for interregional, some money for interregional cooperation foreseen. So this would be an idea to maybe give them a support in order to find projects to match the regions together that have this objective and um, to be kind of a service provider to these managing authorities in this respect. 
So um, just a final word maybe on the future. And so it's all in now in, in, in the process. Uh, thematic uh, discussions going on as well as discussions on the administrative look of the program. And uh, I uh, think that it's a very exciting period, but whatever will come out there, um, I hope that the one or the other of you who has already experience with Interreg, or even the ones that don't, uh, uh, that we will meet under Interreg 5C uh, in, a, in a future project. And uh, yeah, voila. So that you have a, a good uh, impression on interregional cooperation. Thank you very much.